Hi, my name is Will Erickson from Momentum Academy. In this short video, I'm going to talk about how much a Bubble.io developer gets paid. So to start with, this video is for people who are developers, who are thinking about a career in, as a Bubble developer, or perhaps you are hiring a developer for your company. And so this will answer some of your main questions. So what are the factors that influence Bubble Pay? Well, first of all, building software products is an exponential skill where you can create value which can be sold many times over. So people will want to build software because it will really help them in their business or it might help them to optimize an existing business. So it's a great career to consider and you can offer an amazing level of value which can influence your pay. The second thing is Bubble is international. So you can work literally anywhere in the world or you can engage a developer anywhere in the world so long as they have a computer, an internet connection, and a few other skills that can be really useful. Some of those skills are language and cultural compatibility. So talking about, can they communicate? Can they communicate in a common language? And can they understand the culture that each other have? Um, if you're working with people that takes 10 times as long to get on the same page about a feature, um, and then they take another two or three weeks to be able to correct all the bugs and the misunderstandings. This is a huge toll, which really strain the working relationship and make it difficult to achieve the outcomes you were looking for. So if you're a developer, get a strong grasp on the language of your client or your boss, and also understand the culture of their market. Uh, it may be very different to your own culture. The second thing is your technical capabilities. Um, you gotta know your stuff. So, uh, I always look for people that ask the right questions, they can solve problems on the fly, and they can pitch a proposed solution. Uh, not only that, but you have to then be able to build it and make it happen. So, you know, you've got to back yourself in this situation, you've got to have a wide range of skills in Bubble, but then you've also got to, going to have to communicate that and pitch those ideas to your stakeholders. Um, I think the Bubble certification, the official exam, is one really important uh, thing to put on your resume. So if you can get, if you can pass that exam and get certified, that will be a massive uh, win for you. The next thing is time zone. Working in the same time zone or a similar time zone can also be a huge boost to productivity. Um, it is a long-term investment to work with a developer. So being able to build up that relationship and learn how to work together through frequent communication is really important. Also the role you're considering. So, you know, you might find a junior developer, but they need a lot of support from seniors. Um, as people get more experience, they can complete tasks in a lot less time with better accuracy and with a lot more factors considered. So that seniority is a huge uh, influence in price. And it is hard because when you're starting out, you don't get to work under a senior. And so that can be a big problem with just a lack of seniors in the ecosystem. Onshore and offshore can also influence your pay. So often onshore in a country with higher incomes can uh, really increase the cost of a developer. Um, and also it can just be an indication of things like the time zone, the culture, the technical capabilities. Um, is this person in the same legal jurisdiction? So what happens if something goes wrong? Do I have any ability to have a legal recourse? Um, so think about onshore and offshore as a major determinant of level of pay. Also for me, the ability to be client facing is huge. If one of my developers can be client facing, it takes a, a massive load off me and it allows me to get further away from that particular project. So uh, I've often seen client facing developers become uh, promoted and get a lot more opportunities than those that are stuck behind a computer um, just doing the, the work. Building out a network is also a huge, hugely important thing. Uh, it's not only what you know, but it's who you know. So if you think about, um, there's ways like LinkedIn or um, Twitter or X now, which you can use to, uh, to build networks across the world. And there's also in-person events, which are really helpful to build trust, to get to know people. Um, and it just, it does change the dynamics. So think about places you can network with the sort of people that might uh, be clients or might be employers. So let's talk about some numbers. I know this is the really interesting part. So I've taken a little while to get here, but there is no hard and fast rule. Some of these variables will really influence 
the earning potential that you have as a developer or the cost of a developer. So, um, you know, the, the lower cost generally means things take longer, there might be more misunderstandings, there might be more errors. Um, and so these developers need more direction. Whereas at the higher end, these people are really independent. They can solve complicated things. You can delegate almost anything to them and you will get a great outcome. So let's think about a junior developer might come on board somewhere between 750 to 15 USD per hour. And I'm talking about a full-time role uh, as a contractor. So that means you are actually letting that person cover all of their employment benefits for their country and you're just paying them a, a, a weekly or an hourly amount uh, based on them working for you full time. So you're giving them a lot of certainty there. A, mid, a mid-level developer might be 15 to 30 USD per hour, uh, which again, is someone who's quite a lot faster than a junior developer, is more independent and uh, can work at a higher speed. So these people are more expensive. Then you've got your seniors and your, your technical architects. So people who can pull off a complex product, they can do technical design, they can implement um, complex workflows, API integrations, uh, and they again move very quickly. And these people might be at the range of 30 to 50 USD per hour. Then you would have your consultants and your specialists. So these are people who are highly skilled. They might have the ability to mentor or teach they might be able to provide high level guidance into complicated products, um, or they might be very specialized in building MVPs incredibly quickly. So these people are going to attract much higher rates, uh, typically between 60 to $120 USD per hour. And they're more likely to work a, a lower number of hours. So they might come in for one, four, eight hours per week and just get through a lot of work or provide guidance to your you know, mid and senior developers to help them really push forward. The last category I would say are the rock stars. So these are the people who've really built up a strong reputation. They're leaders, they're seen as people who can bring an answer to something incredibly complicated in a tiny fraction of the time as the regular team. They might just propose an alternate solution. Hey, let's not build that. Let's bring in a, a pre-built uh, widget to solve that problem. And so these people, um, I think they just bet, deliver so much value and because of that, they can charge incredibly high consulting rates. Now, another question is what about agency versus hiring a developer directly? And in this case, you know, I guess agencies, you can expect to pay one, 1.3, 1.5, 1.75, 2X, the rate that that developer will be charging to the agency. And the reason this is still valuable is because the agency should provide a level of supervision, resources, templates, um, and documentation so that this person is supervised, they're professional, they can come in and deliver results at a higher level than a solo developer. So as someone who's run an agency who has a development team, I know that the amount of time someone is on my team uh, impacts the way that they can work. The longer they're with me, the more uh, relationship we have, the more common approaches we have to things like planning, documentation, naming conventions, organization of business logic. Uh, and these things definitely impact on productivity. Uh, and so an agency developer should have a higher level of uh, skill and support. And they've got the, the colleagues in that, that senior sort of dev team environment to bounce ideas off. Uh, but the other thing is you can hire an agency developer for a month or for three months, you don't have to bring them on as a full-time um, ongoing employee to be able to access some of the best talent in the world. So to wrap this up, I've given you an idea of the different types of uh, pay or salary that a bubble developer could earn. And look, these are really great numbers on an international scale. So I can understand why becoming a bubble developer is a really attractive option. I've also talked about how you might look at hiring a bubble developer if that's your objective. So thanks so much for listening. If you'd like to learn more, we have a course, Momentum Academy, where we teach all things bubble to get you to being an expert and to achieving your goals, no matter, no matter what they are. So check out momentumacademy.tech and I hope to meet you there.